Welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby back with another Mavericks pregame here. We're talking a little bit of game two tonight because things did not go well in game one. If you watched Positively Relentless last week, you saw me talking with Big Game James. The game was already started at that point. But you saw me talking about why it was going to be a challenge to win game one in Golden State. With Steve Kerr as the head coach, the Warriors at home in game one are 21 and two now. 21 and two in game ones in Oakland since Kerr has been the head coach. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Those losses, by the way, 2016 game one versus OKC, the Warriors fell back 3-1 in that series, came back to win in seven. Likewise, you have uh, 2019 against the Raptors. They lose to Kawhi and them in game one. They end up losing that series, but that's when you have the myriad of injuries, the Kevin Durant, the Clay Thompson, et cetera, et cetera. It basically is what set the stage for the Warriors we see today. So it was going to be a tough proposition to go in there and win game one. You only need to steal one game. But another thing to take into consideration, the Warriors dating back to when Mark Jackson was still the head coach, have won at least one road playoff game in every series. So through all of Kerr and the end of Mark Jackson, I think Mark Jackson's last two seasons As the Warriors head coach, they have won in every series at least one road playoff game. Why does that matter? Well, obviously, they have home court advantage, meaning you're going to have to steal one in their house no matter what. Now, because it's paired with that game one stat I mentioned earlier, now you almost have to steal two because odds are they're going to get one in Dallas. That's a tough proposition to have to deal with. So what worries me a little bit about this, the Warriors' style of play, their spacing and ball movement is so radically different from what you saw from Phoenix. Phoenix was, I mean, Devin Booker's not the playmaker that the Warriors have here. The Warriors really have an offensive arsenal that is an embarrassment of riches as far as small ball goes. Wiggins had a huge game. He got a lot of credit for locking down Luka. I don't know that how much of that was him versus just kind of Luka not having it that night, especially in the third quarter, the Warriors just absolutely blew the doors off. And aside from like two quick threes, Luka, I think hits in the third quarter step backs, it basically imploded on Dallas. So the Warriors, they're going to blitz. They're going to move the ball well, and they're going to make it hell for you on the other end. Dallas fell into the trap. The Warriors spring this better than anyone else in the league. They basically will blitz your socks off at the start of the third quarter and take what looks like a close game and blow the doors off. Dallas was within nine, and in the blink of an eye, just two and a half minutes into the third quarter, you find yourself down like 17 or 19, something like that. Just an utter assault, where it's like Dallas turnover, three. Dallas turnover, three. Missed shot, bucket. Like, just out of nowhere, it's pushed out, and you're going to be hard-pressed to come back from that. So... This is going to be a challenge for Dallas. Like, we talked about the playmakers for them. Dallas, they really improved defensively as the Phoenix series wore on. They were able to see what Phoenix did to them to just completely discombobulate them in games one and two, and then adjust to that. And it was really a masterclass in how they did it, because Phoenix kept trying to implement some of the same stuff throughout. Like, they saw, like, well, we had success with this before. Let's try to go back to it. And that's the continual chess match. But Dallas got so good at guarding against that. They knew, like, hey, Devin Booker can't really facilitate and make plays for these guys here. And if we roll our coverage this way or hedge hard on this, we can really put them out of their game. And he's not going to hit that skip pass. He's not going to hit that skip pass to the corner going back the other way to really stretch the defense. Golden State will do that. Golden State will tear you apart. And what Golden State did defensively, aside from the fact that Because they are the master class of small ball, they're going to be very fast. They're going to be very aggressive. And they looked like a team that after two years of basically purgatory as they waited for everyone to get healthy and back, suddenly is retooled and looks hungry. I think the Memphis series, while yeah, you could say they 
they really took control of that series once jaw went out true but it was also still a very physical tough series and i think there is something to say about they got a little bit of their swagger back from that if you want to say that round one was a little bit too much of a cakewalk for them not a real test since they their 2019 run to the finals kind of fell apart fine but i think they got a lot of that swagger back against the grizzlies and dallas meanwhile I'm not saying Dallas is fat and happy that they're content with just getting to the Western Conference Finals, but I did get the vibe a little bit that Dallas was just kind of like they were they weren't as geared up. They weren't as ready. I think they kind of went in just a little too complacent and got smacked in the mouth, tried to stand back up. You know, they kind of steadied themselves, tried to stand back up. And that third quarter right hook came and it was all over. So they're going to have to make some adjustments because Defensively, Golden State blitzed the hell out of them. Dallas shot 19 threes in the first quarter. Now, part of that is a product of just how Dallas was playing. Golden State, once they see Dallas is bricking threes left and right, uh, they took like 19 threes and made three or something like that in the first quarter. Just utter devastation. And if you're Golden State, of course you're going to stay back. You're not going to close hard because you want Dallas to keep jacking up threes because they're missing them. For the game, Dallas takes like 54 or 56% of its shots as three-pointers. That's atrocious. Like, that is way overkill, especially when they hit so pitifully. It was a masterclass by Dallas of over-reliance and ineptitude on the three ball. That said, I don't, like, Dallas created 23s that were wide open, six feet or more of space between them and the nearest defender. They're not going to have a lot of games, I wouldn't think, where they're just going to miss that many looks. And so it could be, an aberration. Dallas this season, including postseason, is a perfect 10 and 0 coming back for a win after getting blown out by 20 or more points the game before. You don't like that that's happened 10 times this year now, but 10 and 0, you'll take it, especially on the heels of this. Granted, those every one of those occurrences happened coming back home to Dallas. They're still on the road here, so we're going to have to see how they respond, but Dallas, I got to think, is going to shoot the three better. They're going to knock down some shots. And that game, nine points at the half for how just trash Dallas played, how just horrible they looked at times. To be down nine at the half is really a testament to, like, how close they were. Three threes in the first half. Again, 19 attempts in the first quarter. Three threes in the first half. You're knotted up going into the break, and maybe that Golden State run at the third quarter, yeah, it still punches you square in the mouth, but maybe it doesn't knock you on your ass and make you not answer the 10 count. So we're going to have to see how Dallas answers back. Uh, They really bothered Luka. They threw some different looks at him, and the Dallas role players just didn't get near enough out of what they were looking for. So let me see here. I want to refer back to the specific stat line here Um, going back to this. Uh, So Reggie Bullock had 12 points, 3 of 10 from 3, 4 of 12 from the field. Luka only 20 points, absolutely a fall-off game for him. And then you had Dorian Finney-Smith. He's been missing for a few games now. He had 5 points, 1 of 3 from the field. Sorry, 1 of 3 from 3, 2 of 6 from the field. Brunson, 14 points, 0 of 5 on 3, though, 6 of 16 from the field. And Dinwiddie, 17 off the bench, not bad. 5 of 11, 3 of 7 from 3. Dinwiddie actually was not the problem here. Dinwiddie was pretty square for the most part. But they just couldn't find anything with anyone else they really implemented. And so they're going to have to work around some things to find what works. Because shooting 48 three-pointers in a game and making 11 of them, that's 23%. That's impressive ineptitude there. And uh, 36% from the field. Golden State, basically the whole game was shooting between like 56 and 65%. I think they ended up 56. Uh, And that's just, that's a recipe for disaster. So you're going to have to choose. And here's the problem too, right? It's not just that. Golden State, they might be small ball as well, but they out-rebounded Dallas 51 to 35. 51 to 35. That is brutal. You can't get out-rebounded like that. Like, I know Dallas got away in the Utah series with getting out-rebounded by, like, 19 and 17 and the like. They did. But that was a mathematical equation that they kind of 
played the odds with winning in other categories well enough to overcome that. You can't really play that same formula here. And especially when it's a team that doesn't have the ridiculous size advantage on you, you really can't. This is small ball versus small ball. And uh, you got to do better. Like Dallas had, how many turnovers did Dallas have? 13 for the game. That's actually still a respectable number, but a lot of that came in a, in a crucial stretch there when the game was still hovering just barely in reach and then open of the third quarter, it just fell apart. Luca was driving to the basket, getting ripped by Draymond Green on help defense. Uh, same thing happened to Brunson. So they're going to have to make some adjustments, but I think the three-point shooting is going to be better. I'm not hitting the panic button, but Golden State came out and delivered a hell of a first shot. We're going to have to see how Dallas answers the call. There are reports. I, don't, I haven't seen this verified anywhere, but there were reports that Kevin Harlan basically said that Luka, after that game Wednesday night, was up most of the night sick. I haven't seen anything about that by anyone else, so I hesitate to really give it much credence because just like the, the game day thing Wednesday, that photo went around on Twitter and whatnot showing Luka on, in, uh, basically in the Bay Area with a beer at a restaurant, and Mavericks PR came out and was like, yeah, that's an old photo from like earlier in the season. He's not doing that right now on game day. But it all blew up as if Luca wasn't taking anything seriously. And uh, yeah, now you got this report that he was sick most of Wednesday night. The fact that it was apparently Wednesday night, we heard nothing Thursday. And now here we are as I record this 345 on a Friday and haven't heard anything. I tend to think there's probably not a lot to it. But, you know, with the way Luca played, maybe he wasn't feeling 100%. I don't know if that's better or worse. How sick are you? Are you are you over the hump now? Are you back on your feet? I hope that's the case. Uh, if you were healthy, then we're just going to have to say that was the aberration game. But game two is tonight in the Bay Area. Dallas is going to have to bounce back. I do think they still have a good shot in this series. I just think that if they don't get this one in game two, if they don't get game two, man, I don't know that they come back. This is not Phoenix. They're not going to play into your hands. Whether or not you believe Chris Paul and other guys were banged up, that's a different matter. But this team is not going to let you crawl back into it like Phoenix because unlike Phoenix, who was hubris without any championship caliber and pedigree to point to, Golden State is that pedigree. They are championship pedigree. You know, the, the dynasty, it might not really be the dynasty at this point, but it's recent enough and they got enough of those same faces there that it's at least remnants of it. And you got to respect that. You got to respect it and you have to make adjustments and give it your best shot. So that's all my time for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, leave a like, drop a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect and be on the lookout Wednesday. We are going to be running Positively Relentless live Wednesday night. Till next time, guys, I'm DDP. Peace.